There is a significant challenge when working in developing nations in education. Just one issue is how to improve learning outcomes in developing the professional learning of both local teachers and a diverse set of expat teachers against multiple hurdles. As this case study is required to look at just one area of professional development, this slide explains why in this case the issue is broader and fundamental. Previously, nothing has ever been in place. Thus, the question in red proposes, where should the principal start? And which There is a serious issue at this relatively new international school in Vietnam and regards to professional development. Most teachers in the developed world tend to view professional development Before launching into such a challenge, prior preparation and planning prevents random, poorly thought out Are teachers asking themselves, what impact am I having? Or are they just blandly delivering the curriculum? How will the leadership identify and address the needs of both the teachers and students? How can the leader improve this? The aim is to increase success in all areas, but the leadership must encourage teachers to be reflective and ask these big questions of themselves, not only to complain about the, what the school or leader is not doing, some teachers tend to blame a lack of resources or the students are poor or some other extraneous issue to why they may not have success. However, with a more reflective mindset, it is more likely that the teacher will see enhanced results from students. Encouraging teachers to ask these big questions is another challenge for the principal to accomplish. These are just a few barriers that are identified. There has been no professional learning, no desire for change, no consideration of what the impact of teaching has been until now. This is far from an exhaustive list of obstacles that will slow professional learning and a more in-depth plan will be needed over time. The lack of data is just one hindrance this presentation will consider ahead. 
The barriers seem greater than might normally be encountered by comparison to Australian schools, where teachers are used to high expectations in regards to changes such as ATSOL professional standards and general expectations that teachers will undertake regular professional development. QPOT demands this every year as an example to remain licensed to teach in Queensland. Thus the barriers just to initiate any type of professional development or program are numerous. The largest factor being a lack of recognition from the company that the professional development of their teachers can add quality in various ways, including increased staff retention, not just improved test scores. The local teachers are entirely young, female, regionally educated with limited understanding of the world outside of their province, using outdated teaching methods rigidly demanded by the local education authorities. The 10 very diverse expat staff are qualified teachers in their own country, but only two, one being the principal, have teaching experience in other accredited international schools. From a long list of available literature, these are just some methods that may be employed to improve the quality of teaching. An old standard method is a periodic workshop, often with a buy-in consultant, and staff gather to sit and listen for a few hours, but with questionable levels of results. Today, we have a multitude of available strategies, all based on current research, with generally higher degrees of effectiveness. In this situation, due to very limited time and resources, there was a need to choose a starting point and more of these methods may be able to be attempted in the future. Expectations on teachers are far greater than ever, and this is just one figure displayed from the UK Department of Education that shows what they expect the traits of a standard teacher should demonstrate. To accomplish all these features, then, the emphasis here must be to develop teachers as an ongoing strategy. As suggested by Hardy, the focus suggested should be more on the teacher learning than on student test scores. When teachers are still learners themselves, it is more likely that they can relate to students in what they are overcoming in the student's learning journey. After consideration, the chosen starting point was taken from Education Queensland's current professional development program using Nazano's ASOT design questions as the basis for weekly workshops and to implement the school's first ever professional learning community, initially focused on EFL, or English as a foreign language. However, within starting the first professional learning community, the first barrier was quickly hit due to a lack of data. Teachers cannot know if any changes will be effective if there is no data to even analyse to start. Teachers were also placing random children in EFL support, but often this was based on anecdotal observations or even just a chance to remove disruptive children out of class. The next step then was to collect data, and using WIDA screeners, some students were tested, and the results recorded in the table shown. The trend is certainly concerning. All students tested thus far require significant EFL support. Therefore, the PLC will be more vital than ever. A great quote to consider here by the famed John F. Kennedy in 1963 summed up the link between leadership and learning succinctly, simply stating, they are indispensable to each other. What appears as a fundamental flaw in the school's structure is its heavy reliance on just one key player, being the principal. No extra funds are allocated for any supporting leaders that would be commonly found in Australia. No HODs. No lead teachers, no heads of studies, no deputies. More importantly, the principal realises that if this is to be a true success, the legacy must be that the professional learning can continue in the event of his absence. He needs to encourage others to take on leadership roles in the process. Although a work of fiction, leaders can gain much from watching this series. The principal revolved around a transformative leader, Matt Bashir, that worked tirelessly to create a turnaround school. To make the series increasingly gritty and entertaining, they dramatised how he dealt with the murder at the school. In reality, if the school was to sustain the change, the next step would have been to concentrate on the learning of the teachers, or in other words, 
be an instructional leader as well as transformative. In our real life school, more is being attempted. A transformative leadership style can be improved on where the principal himself becomes both a learner and an instructional leader, preferably avoiding any murders in the process. The attempt at this school is to avoid the tired, fixed mindset, still common in business and education. The school leader needs to be both an instructional and transformative leader using a benefit mindset. This is where the leader aims to bring out the best in everyone. And the emphasis is on making a meaningful difference. Build on the growth mindset and express why more often. The right mindset is vital for success, and if the school leader has the best mindset, much more can be accomplished. There is much to do, and with such limited time available, this six-point list may perhaps be where the school leader can review for further action. With only one key player, and a corporation that does not particularly value professional learning, the first point is probably the most important. Maintain motivation. And keep the children in mind, not the corporation. Conclusions are fairly general at this point, as this is all new. The most obvious conclusion is that this will take a long time and will be challenging in all aspects. It will require a strong, resourceful and empathetic leader to see it through to a successful fruition.